Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We hope that you're all doing awesome and it's nice to see you all. We've been a little bit busy in the Lambo and Mango headquarters not so much with Lambo and Mango stuff, but with our move and all the things that comes with that. But today I wanted to share with you guys my tips on a healthy sun conure. So let's talk about sun conure care. My first tip and tip number one, this is super important. So let's start with the important stuff is diet and clean water. Clean water, that goes without saying, your conures should always have access to clean, fresh water throughout the day for drinking or bathing and splashing around. But you just wanna make sure that whenever you see that their water's gotten dirty, you just wanna change it. So I'll change mangoes sometimes a few times a day, sometimes only twice a day, sometimes only once a day. But I always make sure that he has fresh, clean water. So keep an eye on your Conyers water. The next thing is diet. So this this is the big one. Diet is very important and 30% of behavioral issues can stem from diet alone. So you want to avoid C diets because they don't offer much nutritional value to your bird and they can be very fattening. Nuts and seeds should be used as treats and rewards for your bird for training and good behavior. So what should your conure be eating? They should be eating tons of fresh veggies, legumes, grains, beans, and a good high quality pellet. Some really good high quality pellets include tops, bird tricks, and Harrisons. We were not able to get our hands on bird tricks because they actually don't ship out of the state but we were able to get some from Tops and from Harrison's. In the beginning, Mango was on Tops pellets, but he didn't take to them too well, and I found him swimming around in the pellets more often than he was eating them. I had to get creative and powderize the pellets and put it on his food to get it in his system, but once we switched over to Harrison's, he eats these and loves these pellets, so he munches away on Harrison's pellets, so every bird will have their preference, so you can just kind of figure out which pellets your bird is going to like best. But in addition to pellets, the majority of Mango's diet is a fresh chop diet. Now we use the recipes from the Bird Tricks cookbook, but sometimes if we're in a pinch or we don't have the cookbook on hand, because we're traveling or we're all over the place, then I do sometimes make my own and I love sharing those recipes with you guys also on our blog. Also, if you learn better by reading, I do have a blog post on this topic as well, so I'm going to link it in the description below. So Sun Conyers are really busy bodies with really busy beaks, so we wanna make sure that we're filling those beaks and bodies with good, nutritional, high-quality food. So let's take a look at Mango's diet. In the morning, I give him a fresh chop that's filled with vegetables, grains, legumes, beans, and he loves this chop. So he'll eat this in the morning and he'll also get this in the evening. But in the evening and throughout the day, he also has access to his Harrison's pellets so he can choose what he wants to eat. I like to offer him a little bit of a buffet throughout the day to make sure that he's always well fed, but he gets to choose what he wants to eat. But in the morning, we always do the fresh chop as I mentioned, and in the evening, he eats a little bit of the fresh chop and the pellets. Throughout the day, I offer him treats when we do training, like his favorites, including pistachios, almonds, and cashews. He'll munch on some of Harrison's pellets, and once in a while, about three or four times a week, you can offer your bird fruit. Fruit is high in sugar, so it's not something that they should be eating every single day. So I like to make mango a little kebab for an afternoon snack with some of his favorite juicy fruits, or I'll make him a kebab that's a mix of veggies and fruits, and sometimes I'll just make him a kebab filled with his favorite vegetables. 
You also want to be aware of foods that you need to avoid for your conure that are fatty, unhealthy, or toxic. This includes chocolate, avocado, apple seeds, fried fatty foods, and things like that. Your conure should not be taking sips of your coffee in the morning. They should not be eating your cereal with you and things like that. You can offer some of your breakfast if you're having just a plain scrambled egg, then your conure can join you and enjoy that egg maybe once a week. But there are some foods that you just want to completely avoid and then other foods that are okay in moderation once in a while, like eggs or a little bit of plain boiled chicken. Mango loves chicken, but I always make it for a Lambo, so it's not really for mango, but he thinks it is. But there's foods that you want to give in moderation, but the majority of their diet should be veggies, a little bit of fruit, grains, and just basically whole foods from the earth with a good quality palate and a limited amount of nuts and seeds. Number two is bathing. Your son Conyer should be bathing every single day or at least several times a week. So Mango takes a bath usually every day, sometimes every other day. I don't force him, I just kind of feel out when he's in the mood to splish splash around. That's why he always has a nice big bowl of fresh clean water in his condo. And usually he does the dishes with me, so I can always tell when he starts to try to get into the sink water that he's in the mood for a bath. Now there are several ways that you can do this. You can offer a nice large dish, you can let them splash around in the sink, invite them in the shower, you can use a spray bottle. This is Mango's favorite. He loves when he's being misted and it just feels like a rainforest shower in pure bliss. But bathing is really good for your parent and it's great for their skin health as well and their feather health. So if you want to check out more about feather health, I do have a video about that as well. Number three, and this is their cage, condo, aviary, whatever you want to call it. I don't like the term cage, so I usually just refer to mangoes as his condo, and he has a few of them, but... Yeah, you wanna get the bigger, the better. Sun Conyers love roomy cages. Now, according to some online sources, the minimum cage requirement is 24 inches by 24 inches by 30 inches. But like I mentioned, the bigger, the better. They will utilize the room because they are very active birds. So that brings me to the next point in their little condos. You wanna make sure you've got lots of perches and you can even get a variety of perches. Sanded ones, which are really good for filing down their claws. I need to get mine done. And you can get wooden ones to just make it seem like, you know, they're in that rainforest nature. There's really lots of awesome perches out there. So you want to include a variety of perches. You want to have a food bowl, a water bowl in there, which we already talked about. And you want to have a variety of toys. And you also want to alternate these toys on a weekly basis to prevent boredom. And a really great place where we love to get natural toys is Planet Pleasures. And we have a discount code for you, Mango15 for 15% off. When choosing a cage, you want to choose the biggest one that your budget allows for, but also be mindful of bar spacing. Bar spacing should be pretty small and you want to make sure that their head will not fit through the bar spacing. The bar spacing in a Sun Conyers cage should be about five eighths of an inch and three quarters of an inch wide. The closer you can get the bars together, the better. Now with their little cozy condos filled with toys, perches, and lots of fun stuff, make sure to avoid rope materials because those can be ingested and can cause lots of health problems. So try to stick to natural toys. Now when it comes to condo care for your son Conyer, you also wanna make sure that they're living in a clean environment. You wanna make sure that you clean their condo aviary or cage regularly every single week and on a daily basis you want to wipe down anywhere that you find any bird droppings 
or just any leftover food or anything. So give it a nice wipe down every single day, but on a weekly basis, you wanna wash the whole thing. As with all birds, proper exercise is imperative to good health. So this brings me to point number four. This is exercise. You wanna make sure that your bird is getting adequate exercise every single day. This means that they're flying around, they're spreading their wings, they're exploring, and they're having a good time. You wanna make sure that outside of their cage, that they're climbing and having fun in and destroying toys, that they're also getting out of the cage time every single day. You wanna make sure that they get three to four hours, if not more. If you can offer more, that's great. If you can't, depending on your schedule, then at least three to four hours a day. Now, Mango only flies around indoors, so you wanna make sure of any household dangers and make sure that they're not in their way. For example, ceiling fans or wires and things like that and you wanna make sure that the windows are always closed and that the door is closed and no one's coming in and out unexpectedly. And just make sure that they have that safe environment. If you're thinking about free flying or you wanna take them outdoors, then I recommend consulting with professionals that do this because sun conures can be easy targets for predators and it can be unsafe, but you can also harness train your bird to take them outside on walks with you. I like to take Mango in a little travel birdie backpack because I just feel the safest this way and that way he gets to come on walks with us and observe the nature and the world and get some fresh air. Speaking of fresh air, if you live in a place where it's nice and warm, taking your bird outside or putting their condo outdoors for a little bit each day is going to be very beneficial for them because they get a little bit of vitamin D from the sun and they get that fresh air. My tip number five, which is socialization, lots of TLC and love. So sun conures are very social birds. So they love to spend time with their flock which means you. So they are very smart, intelligent, loving, and cuddly, especially when they get to build that trust with you. So make sure to build that trust with your conure and make sure that you have daily interactions with them. Otherwise, they can become bored and develop behavioral problems. You wanna give them plenty of freedom each day and quality time outside of their aviary so they can exercise and be engaged with you socializing. So tip number six is regular training. Now, there's tons of YouTube videos and there's lots of resources and I'm going to be making videos on training in the near future as well. I've had a lot of requests on this, so that is coming soon, guys. It's coming soon. So training is something that you wanna do with your bird on a daily basis because it helps them to be trained. So you can train them to be quieter, you can train them to do cute things, like turn around and flip upside down and open their wings. You also need to build that trust with them by getting them to perch up on your finger, on your hand. So you also wanna learn how to handle them so that you're comfortable with your bird and your bird is comfortable with you. But that training is also really good mental stimulation for them. Plus, it's a time where you can bond with your bird and they also get treats out of it. So they love that and they will love you for that. Another key in your son Conyers health, mental health, and physical health is going to be foraging toys. Foraging is something that comes naturally to birds in the wild. It keeps them busy, it wears down their beak, and provides that mental stimulation. Sun conures are natural destroyers. You can think of them as mini dinosaurs. Foraging regularly avoids boredom, and it should be available to them so that they can mimic their natural food foraging behavior in the wild. There are lots of different fun ways that you can offer foraging for your bird, and I have a video on that as well, so you can check that out, but there's tons of ways that you can offer foraging for your bird. A few more tips and we're finished. Next is a sleeping routine. You wanna get your bird in a sleeping routine because conures, as with all birds, they require 12 hours of dark dark, uninterrupted, 
quiet sleep time. This is super important for them and it's super important for their health and for their behavior as well. So you want to make sure that you have a space dedicated for your bird to get that 12 hours of quiet, dark sleep time every single night and work on a schedule that's going to work for you and your bird. For example, it could be 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. or 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. If it's available to you, you want to offer your bird their own room or space where you can close the door, close the windows, or sorry, close the blinds, turn off the lights, and make sure that no one goes in there and bothers them for that 12 hours. But if it's not available to you, then you'll just want to cover them up and make sure that they're in their own little quiet space where they're not interrupted and it's nice and dark and quiet for them. And my last tip for today is to understand your bird's behavior and molting periods. So over time, you're going to bond with your bird and develop that birdie relationship and it's going to be the most awesome thing in the world but this way you'll be able to tell how they're feeling when they're feeling off when they're feeling good what they're wanting i can always tell by mango's behavior and his different chirps and squawks on what he wants and what he wants from me whether he's hungry or he wants attention i can always tell but i can also tell when he's going through hormonal periods and when he's going through molting periods and this is important as well so hormonal periods usually happen in fall and spring and you'll start to notice different types of hormonal behaviors. They might start rubbing their beak or trying to nest and things like that. It's because they're trying to mate and it's something that comes naturally to them. You also want to understand your bird's molting periods. Molting happens to a bird when its feathers naturally shed and new ones replace the old ones. Molting is necessary for any bird including your conure. Baths are going to be important because they can help with the itchiness that they might have during molting periods. So during molting periods you want to make sure that they're having those daily baths to help them with that itchiness and you'll notice that they're preening themselves more. You can also help them out by giving them scritches in those harder to reach spots. Even though sun conures are little, they are a big responsibility. So that's it for today, guys. I hope that this video was helpful. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, share, and comment, and I'll see you in the next video.